say Scottish independence would cut electricity prices, but those backing a no vote claim leaving the UK would lead to price rises. Today, a new Scottish government report says that we could continue with a single British market in gas and electricity after independence, but the UK government has already ruled that out, as Fiona Walker reports. It's the same electronics that we use in all the modules. Hi there. It's the latest photo opportunity in the long run-up to the referendum. Today, it's all very high-tech. These machines test pipelines, a good place for the First Minister to be when the energy report he commissioned is published. What we've looked at is what's the most cost-effective way to get uh, the right conditions for consumers, uh, security of supply. And for that reason, we said the industry and the Commission were recommending that maintaining a single market is in the interests of everybody on both sides of the border. This is what the report is proposing, for Scotland to have its own regulator, but not its own energy market, instead keeping a single UK market. So does this sound like modern independence or more Devo Max for energy? How much does the UK market matter? It's important for, for Scotland to have a ready market for export. There will be markets in the future, of course, across this continent. Well, at the moment, Scotland is very integrated uh, to England, Wales and Northern Ireland through our single electricity market. But that would be quite difficult to keep. Uh, the Scottish Government's proposing in separate regulators, so there would be two regulators, not one. I think the chances of having the single integrated uh, energy market that we have at the moment will be very slim. There are also ideas in the report for reducing fuel poverty in Scotland, like removing some of the government costs on energy bills, something the Scottish Government says couldn't be done without independence. We have this situation of fuel poverty amid energy plenty, and therefore the Commission's recommendation is to have a specific office uh, for, uh, for fuel poverty and for fuel issues and affordability. It strikes me as a very positive proposal. We have to do much more to make sure that all of our citizens share in this energy plenty. Well, what the Scottish Nationalist Party are proposing is that people's taxes would go up to pay for that energy efficiency. So it's either consumer or the taxpayer. You, you can't have it uh, both ways. Someone has to pay for it. So I'm afraid this is just another con from, from Alex Salmond. The overall response from Westminster implies today's report is having your cake and eating it. Particularly this point, an independent Scotland keeping the Westminster Renewable Subsidy, which means British taxpayers would carry the cost of the large renewable sector in Scotland. Is it right to assume that the rest of the UK would be happy to pay? They would like uh, the rest of Great Britain to pay for renewables in Scotland. That frankly won't happen. So if you have a competitive product and you have a customer who absolutely needs your product to keep the lights on, then that is a guarantee you that supplies of Scottish electricity will flow south of the border. And that means that it's good for Scotland, but also absolutely necessary for the people of England as well. So a realistic template for an energy secure Scotland, or a referendum wish list. Like keeping the pound or EU membership, it's another area of dispute for voters to digest. Perhaps Scottish independence wouldn't be quite as independent as it sounds. Or is this a vision for practical independence, which could become reality if Scotland votes yes? That was Fiona Walker there. Well, joining me now from Westminster is the Shadow Energy Minister, Tom Greatrex, and from Dundee, the SNP's Shadow Spokesperson for Energy, Mike Weir. Tom Greatrex, if I can come to you first. This um, report today, independent panel of experts, come up with no practical reasons why we can't keep a single integrated energy market across the UK, even after independence. So is it just for political reasons that Westminster keeps ruling it out? Well, no, I think I was curious about this report, actually, and I'm, I've got a lot of respect for Bob Armour and his team, and in fact I met them in the early part of this year, is that this report was um, uh, pr produced to the Scottish Government in the spring, and it's been several weeks since they've published it, and I think we now know why they waited until the Scottish Parliament was in recess uh, before they did so, because it doesn't actually address the fundamental point here, which isn't whether or not there could be uh, functioning energy exchanges between uh, Scotland having left the UK and the rest of the UK, and uh, I don't think anyone's suggesting that couldn't happen, but that the support regime and the, the support regime would be shared across all of the consumers in the, all of the UK uh, to disproportionately support renewable generation in Scotland. And when Alex Salmon cites Ireland as an example, what he 
either doesn't know and he should know if he's a self-professed energy expert or he does know and he's neglecting to say is that although there's a shared energy system between Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, there is not a shared support regime for the cost of renewables. But there currently is a shared support regime across the UK as it stands. Why can, that, why can that simply not persist after independence because the rest of the UK needs Scotland's energy and it needs its renewable energy to meet its carbon emission targets? So it would make sense for everything to stay the same. Well, it, Frank, it doesn't. That's part of the problem. I mean, Alex Salmond asserts this, and he's just been asserting it today, um, but it isn't the case that necessarily the rest of the UK would require Scottish renewable power to meet those targets or to keep the lights on, as he, as he said in your clip just then. And in fact, right. in 2012, the last year we've got full figures for, actually the rest of the UK, uh, England and Wales, actually imported more energy from the rest of Europe than they did from us in Scotland. And so it just it doesn't bear uh, any serious scrutiny to suggest that it's, it's a requirement that it would be Scottish energy to, uh, to either to keep the lights on or to meet those targets. Okay. Okay, the energy okay. in Scotland would be one of a range of choices that the rest of the UK would have. And that's why, you know, the integrated market and the shared support regime is what we have now. It's a risk we don't have to, t okay. to, to make and a choice we don't have to take. Mike Weir. It may be possible to keep an integrated market, as today's report suggests, but if the Westminster parties are going to rule it out, it's not going to happen, is it? <clears throat> well, the Westminster parties, particularly Ed Davey, didn't actually rule it out. He said it might be difficult. The point is, however, that it's not about subsidy. It's about where you get the energy you need at a price that is competitive. Now, under the present regime, the, the infrastructure is there, the energy is flowing from Scotland uh, to the south. Uh, the rest of the UK has very serious difficulties with energy. Tom says they get it from uh, other parts of Europe. That is true. There are interconnectors bringing energy from the European mainland, but there are also concerns on the European mainland about security of supply. Uh, what we have here is a, an energy system that works. Now, whether they buy Scottish energy or, or buy uh, energy elsewhere, they're going to have to pay for it, if they buy energy elsewhere, the existing infrastructure uh, bringing it across the channel, for example, will be insufficient uh, to, to take the amount that they, they now buy from Scotland. Be massive but they, 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 they say they so. will buy Scottish energy if it's at a competitive price and without a subsidy regime coming from the rest of the UK, and it won't be at a competitive price without those subsidies, will it? Well, you talk about subsidies, but, but it is not a subsidy. It's a way of producing renewable energy, which they need to meet their targets. Now, if they're going to do that, they're going to have to buy it elsewhere. We're going into a system of contract for difference where energy suppliers, and the Act doesn't say they have to be within the UK, um, get, are guaranteed a long-term price to enable that supply to be secure. They, have, they are going to do that whatever, whether it's Scottish energy or someone else's energy. But the point being, the infrastructure is already there to deliver the Scottish ener energy to the rest of the UK market at a reasonable price. That is not the case from, for other energy, where there would have to be massive new investment okay. in infrastructure, okay. which, which makes it uncompetitive to do that. Tom Greatrex, do you think well, practically... Except, no, except it's not, because Mike's fundamentally wrong here, because what the suggestion is, is that the rest of the UK would continue to subsidise and support the development of renewable technology in what would be a neighbouring uh, but separate state, and that the development of, for example, offshore wind in Scotland would be supported uh, by, uh, by, that, by that shared regime. In fact, as Mike well knows, there's much more uh, installed offshore generation capacity in English waters than there is in Scotland, by far now, both in terms of what's installed and also what's uh, under okay. construction and what's in planning. And the reality is then it will become, a, it will become about price. And Mike, where it's, where it's if it's about price, be, can be, Scotland compete? But, Tom keeps going on about subsidy. It's not about subsidy. It's about a competitive price for your energy. And as I pointed out before, they're going to have, whenever they buy their energy, they're going to have, have to pay a price for it. Now, that price from to Scotland, it will be set by a contract for difference. Right. The price from France or Germany may be set okay. by a contract from different, for difference. There is a, an already agreement with Ireland, for example, for a contract yeah, right. for difference for energy okay. to be produced in Ireland and brought to the All UK. Right. Mike Weir, Tom Greatrex, thanks very much for that. Now, thousands of workers